Hello, and welcome to the Raw Impressions Podcast. <sighs> Sorry, Sorry, I couldn't help it. Adele Barlow. This is my exciting and introduction. Who Barlow? I just had that yawn, I couldn't help it's it. It's October 2024. The Halloween. The Halloween. 2024, October 31st, is today. Are you listening today on Halloween? Happy Halloween. Introduction. I made this introduction. I kind of am wearing a Halloween themed. Oh, I just found a pen in my pocket. Happy Halloween. What is it? What kind of pen? It's a Hyatt Regency. Oh. <clears throat> That's not an important pen. It's not? No. Mm. So you're just, ju- you're, you're just, you're dressed like a giraffe. Yeah. Is that this print? This is yeah. a giraffe? You're, you're going to be a giraffe for Halloween. I just thought this is kind of the most costumey outfit I have. You should be wearing your, um, your jacket. Oh, my chewy jacket? Your chewy jacket. <laughs> Too late. We would kind of match then because that was all brown. And Do you want to start the episode all over again while I go put on my Chewbacca no. hoodie that we purchased at Target almost 10 years ago? God. Wow. That, that, that hoodie's really stood the test of time. It really has. It's, it's the best hoodie ever. And to think I kind of balked at the price, I was like 40, it was like $40. That was $40 <laughs> well spent. Oh, silly. Oh my God. That thing is so amazing. My, my Chewbacca hoodie. I know. Are you going to um, wear it tomorrow night or tonight for Halloween? Tonight? Yes. Yeah. You mean? For our Halloween That's right. night, I, we can host I do a that? Halloween. I thought I was going to like actually do a costume this year, but I couldn't be arsed as they say in England. <laughs> I couldn't be arsed to figure out a new costume for myself. Izzy did. There were rumblings that Izzy was going to demand that I oh. that, that I dress that I do a real costume this year. But yeah. you know what? It's good to just put on the chewy hoodie because that's it. And it's it a solid always choice. Always works. It does. Yeah, and it always you know makes a smile on a couple people's faces who for some reason haven't seen it. There's yet. a lot of people that probably need to see me in the Chewbacca just because they find it comforting. Mm-hmm. This is a time you know it's a bit of a spooky time. Oh for, yeah, for a lot of reasons for for people. So to see me in my Chewbacca hoodie uh-huh. will be comforting for people and <laughs> myself. Yes, we're like, what, less than a week out from the election. People need some comfort. They need something that's not going to make them feel paranoid and anxious. And Chewbacca will be there for them. <laughs> and my giraffe, my, my giraffe jumpsuit. Mama giraffe and yeah. daddy, daddy Chewbacca. I, uh, do you know who made this jumpsuit? <laughs> do you think I would? Do you think well, that I... Have I heard the name before? Have I ever I'll, uttered the I'll, name before? I'll say this. So the the person who is the designer of this jumpsuit is the sister of someone famous we were speaking of this morning in the car on the way to school. What? Yeah. I don't They're I'm, a brother and sister. I don't know if they have more siblings, but... Um, Jack Antonoff? Yes. This is, what? This is... His sister, I think Rachel, Rachel Antonoff, and she has like a small little line in New York. Jack and Antonoff's sister made that giraffe. I mean, for I don't you. know if she physically sewed it herself, but this is her design. This is her jumpsuit. Wow. Yeah. What a family. I ordered it directly from her website. Wow. Like, what, three or four years ago when I wore it for New Year's Eve? I can't, it's kind of an Antonoff kind of old, day for us. We listen this might to- actually be pre pandemic, right? I, I've had this for a while, but. Is it pre-pandemic? It might be, uh, yeah. So Jack Antonoff makes the is records Taylor Swift. Yeah. And how much other Antonoff things. have I? How much Antonoff have I taken on in the last ten years? A lot. I've lot. I've mm-hmm. really. I've lived in his work. We've lived in his. bubble. I have lived yeah. in his work and his bubble. Yeah. And since I'm, you know, I'm a musician. <laughs> an erstwhile engineer. Do you think he's heard of you? I don't know. Hmm. 
I don't know, but I did meet somebody who works with him recently. Oh, yeah, that's so right. So there, there is now a degree of separation. Uh-huh. But that's right. It's okay. Yeah. I don't, people don't, it doesn't matter. All the people need to know is I am, I am tomorrow. I will be Chewbacca. Mm-hmm. I will have uh, my synthesizer out there running through my, my trusty Roland Cube amp. Yep. So if uh, anybody's strolling by, anybody's hanging out at the party, <laughs> they can come up and hit the presets. They can now remember you twiddle some knobs. Are in charge of the house while I go with the throng of children around the block I to do love, trick or treating. I, I, I know I love you that love I can this just, role. I love it. I want to be the. I just want to be. I don't want. I don't want to trick or treat. I don't want to walk around. I know you. Like, I just want to be in my zone. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. I want to be in my house w- on my steps. Yeah. With Chewbacca <laughs> and the fire pit and the fire pit. Hey, rotating oh. those logs. The song, the very, very special, special Halloween song, cool. will be commencing Ooh. after this little tambo bass groove. Oh, this sounds familiar. A little oh, bit man. of tambo. I had a good last two days. I love it. This this doesn't get old. The sound. Yeah. Still that's, sounds that's, good. That's manual tambourine. I, manual. That is not a sample. Nice. That's my wrist. My right wrist. Commencing. We. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The other day, Adele and I were driving to Hadley, mm-hmm. which is where all the big box the stores are, here. including Trader Joe's. Trader Joe, and we got to Target because we had to stack up for our Halloween party. It's a half hour from here, so it's a drive. Yeah. So, um, why did we listen to Brian Jonestown Massacre? Oh, I know why. Well, why did we? Because we were talking about Psycho Candy, our one mm-hmm. of our favorite records and the name of one of our oh, cat, yes. our new cats and one of our kittens. Yep. And I said to Adele, I'm like, boy, the, the second Jesus and Mary Chain record, I found it disappointing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. when I got it back when I was a kid, because I got it right when it came out, import, you know. Darklands, back, back then right? the, the imports would come out maybe a month before they came out in the States. Uh-huh. You know, there was always a lag. So if you wanted to get the record hot off the presses, right on the streets, wanted to be the f- among the first people to hear it, you bought it like on import. So I got Darklands, and I was like, I was, and then you said, well, why don't we listen to that while we drive down to the stores tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Let's listen to Darklands. So we started listening to Darklands, and it was fucking terrible. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, it's no Psycho Candy. Now don't anybody. Don't, that's between us, mm-hmm. between Lou and Adele and you all. Mm-hmm. Don't go telling anybody Mm-mm. that we think Darklands is shit. Especially not Jesus and Mary Jane. Not them. <laughs> I, I want to be friends with them. We, we want to be dear, dear friends with them. And so when we meet them, we'll say nothing but love, loving comments about all albums. But yeah, they don't hear anything about this. Between us. And they you, don't hear anything no. about Mm-mm. how I was. I don't like I was describing. It's not that I was heartbroken by the record. Because look. That, I thought that was the word you used. No, I, no what I said was. Mm. I can't say I was heartbroken exactly because there was so much other good music coming out at the That's time. I, think, I just okay. I just pivoted. Uh huh. All yeah. my hopes and dreams were not invested <laughs> in Jesus and Mary Chain. I had I still had Sonic Youth. I had Swans. Mm-hmm. I had my you know discovering Neil Young shit like that. I had plenty of things to listen to. Sure. But I was like. But then somehow I thought somehow then we were like you know let's let's listen to a like like something kinda, that's like that's like that like kind of sixties kind of goth kind of noise kind of shoegaze like I, I their description is like goth yeah. shoegaze so we something you know whatever but um did you so we put on Brian Jonestown Massacre tepid peppermint wonderland i don't, I don't know. know it's like a, know. it's like kind of a compilation greatest yeah. hits thing yeah and boy oh my god i was like it's i like swear a- to god there's times when i hear that band and i feel it is so perfect the music is so perfect to me mm-hmm. and it feels increasingly as i get older and when i hear them it feels like a fucking warm embrace i'm like i can't believe how generous this music feels to me right now i can't believe how perfect it feels it's like shambolic it's jangly Mm -hmm. it's got a little it's got like the 60s stuff like the ah, it's got the the kind of gothy dark stuff it's kind of drugged out, but but really <laughs> catchy, you know, like it's not, it's just, it's this amorphous, like whoosh, just the way, almost every song, and it's like, mm-hmm. and homemade, and like, it's, it's like, I relate to it so fucking much. It sounded so fresh. Oh. I, I was like, whoa. This is aged, is aging. Aging, like beautifully. me. Beautifully. Ooh, I'd like to, I want it, yeah. I mean, I was like this, just like you said, it feels old, yet new, yet fresh, yet innovative, yet easy, yet I, I know, it textured, feels, it yet feels derivative, sexy, but, are, but original, uh, it but sounds poppy, sexy, but, got, I, but nerdy, but I mean, like, it's you, like you don't think you're cool enough to hang out with them for sure. Like you kind of pass them at a party I, and you're like, ah, oh, they had is a that fucking them vibe. over there? I lived in LA. We both did. Mm-hmm. But I, I kind of was like, I came into contact with 
members of that band over the 17 years that I was there, and it was always memorable. And I can <laughs> <laughs> always <laughs> memorable. Those mm-hmm. guys, it's mm-hmm. like, like I didn't really know their music when I knew of them or spent time in their proximity. I didn't mm. really, I wasn't familiar with the music. It's kind of a recent thing for me, to be perfectly honest. Oh, yeah, like within I've liked the them for within, a while. within mm, the last mm-hmm. fifteen years, I mm. guess. I think I probably really sure. listened to them about fifteen years ago. Oh yeah, well um, that's probably about the same for me too. Oh really? Okay, yeah. so maybe anyway. a little bit before that, but yeah, it you know. So then I was just like, I had this thought. We were listening to it. I'm like, God, it sounds so good. And I and I thought, I just keep thinking of that Dead or Alive <laughs> song, that that new that new wave hit or mm-hmm. like new wave disco hit that I loved too. By the way, loved. You spin me right round, round. You spin me like a record. What is it called? You spin me round. But you're the one who's been singing uh, it for days. No, I don't know that. But I love that song so much when it came out, when it was a hit. I loved that song. Yeah. And then I just like the two songs started melding in my brain. You're and I'm like, like, that song's kind of reminding me of a Jesus, or not Jesus, of uh, not Jesus and Mary Chain, but brian jonestown massacre okay so mm-hmm. and then we were kind of joking in the car ride we were like oh my god how great would it be to just put music through the brian jonestown massacre filter and yeah, then you like know the, like, like the ai yeah exactly like and see <laughs> was, what the song sounds exactly. like once I it's been given hear... the brian jonestown massacre yeah, exactly. treatment <laughs> exactly it was like an ai what thing, will like, the song sound like now i want to hear dead or alive's you spin me round Mixed with an enemy. Yeah, yeah. By Brian Jones. I want to hear exactly the mix of those two songs. When you knew that they were complimentary, you know, that there was like a... It, it was felt it, similar. There was an ease to, to sliding the, that it's filter weird, right on. I went, I went back and I listened to the original Dead or Alive song, and it's the most frantic, like, jagged mm. disco song. It's, boom, it's very like... Ooh, ah. It's really fast. It's very pitched. Like the the way that he, the guy who sings, Pete Burns is hilarious, man. His delivery was so intense and, and so like so over the top. It was exhilarating when it came out. You had out. to really I'm, slow it down. And I was like, <clears throat> oh, wow, what would it be like? Because I, I, I've always loved the sentiment of that song a lot. And the way I love the... I, Felt even the, the chorus then back then was kind of psychedelic. Mm-hmm. You spin, it's like you, it really creates so much motion. I know, you know, I can almost feel like there's a cloud of smoke yeah, like floating above our heads. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I heard, I heard like, and then I started, I think that night, like we got home and then I played it on guitar a bunch, and Izzy was like, you sound scratchy. You need to work on. <laughs> she's like, you need to keep working on that one, Daddy. And I'm like, mm. and I, but I got really excited, and I came down to the kitchen and I played what I was thinking for you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it's the two songs work perfectly together. <laughs> they do work perfectly together. I completely agree. I wish that you could just release that bad boy on Spotify and Apple Music right now and. Give Fuck it that. to the world. It's such a Come gift. Come get it. <laughs> Fuck that. Nuh-uh. It's the new economy. You, well, you want it, come to me. I still like it. I think that it's, you know, it's a gift. And if you can get it, great. But I like it a lot. And I think that um, I'm happy you spent as much time on it as you did, which was a lot, folks. <laughs> was it a lot of time? <laughs> well, I mean, it was... It's a fair amount of time. Yesterday. Today. You've, I mean, for like hours and hours, you've been really... It's what it takes. Twiddling. It's what it takes. Dinking around and just trying all your little instruments and knob turning. I knew, and I knew exactly what I had to do. I you like, even like ran out and you were like, I need to buy a guitar. <laughs> yeah, I almost bought a guitar. <laughs> Check that out. I'm you a, ordered a pedal from Jack White? I did. I mean, it just like kind of set you on fire. You were like, I, did. I need this pedal. I, I need can, reverb no. in my life. Jack, Jack's going to help me. Uh, the Jack the Jack White reverb pedal is not on that recording. No, I did it's not, not receive it. Guys. I thought I was like, you know, you get so used to things just coming the next I day. I know you were like, I'm like, this I is an Amazon pe- honey buns. I ordered the pedal. I'm like, oh, this is coming. This is coming from the third man headquarters. <laughs> 
it's not being packed until like the day after tomorrow not no disrespect i mean they they are a machine no they're third man is amazing listen, that's in no way they're well, doing look, great things they, i just <laughs> they can take the fucking time and they're sure. gonna do it and they can you know yeah you can put it in a nice box and send it to me it's gonna be like it's fucking, gonna be really it's sweet. gonna be like christmas when i get that I goddamn know. guitar pedal well i was mad that you're like i'm gonna go order it right now i was like how am i ever gonna buy you a christmas present and i'm sure some people can relate to this where it's like you are so hard because when you want something you're like i just gotta go get it right now <laughs> all right when i want something i want it now i know you do i want it now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and i want i wanted that pedal now but it's not coming now so i i didn't use it on the recording so mm-hmm. that would have been a great song i know to test out that pedal on i oh. know what's gonna be what's gonna be how, the song how then? deep is your reverb jack what is that spring let me hear the spring jack i'm excited i'll find out later yeah but yeah i, I spent a little bit of time on that I like it. But anyway, you didn't get a guitar. You, you dr- I didn't get a guitar. You I was flew like, out of the house. You're like, I got to go to... I, want, I wanted to get a steel string guitar because mine replay is... Replay and turners and... My, my acoustic guitar is like stuck with all the dyno shit and the dyno storage space and the dyno mm-hmm. spot in mm-hmm. the big building in East Hampton, Massachusetts. Yeah. I don't have my steel string guitar, so I was like, I need it needs a jangly steel string because that's what's on the original. And I'm like... Went to look for steel string guitars and they were, they're okay, but they're big and they're like 400 bucks for anything that's like somewhat decent. And I'm like, I don't want to just impulsively buy a, mm. I got to find a guitar, like an acoustic guitar that I really love. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got to, it's got to be something that I play and I'm like, oh, I can't live without this where it starts, it speaks songs to me. Cause some guitars yeah. do that. You pick them yeah. up and I'm like, whoa, new song. Mm-hmm. And, uh, None of the guitars did that for me. No, for sure. That's so, that's that's smart. That's so good I just that use my regular nylon string string guitar. Mm-hmm. All of these details. I'll, I'll put the details of the recording on our hub stack. Put that on the stack. Yeah. I'll put that on the stack. And then also let people know which uh, which pedal you ordered from uh, Third Man. Yeah, I can't. I I don't remember the name of it. Well, I'm sure you could find the email that would give you that it's information. Like, it's like a fancy word for cave, which is cool. Really? Because that's what you're looking for in a reverb. Absolutely. Something well, cavernous. smart. Something oh. cavernous. Huh. I wonder if he named it. I wonder, like, how involved is he? Who knows? I, I assume that Jack White is totally involved. Mm-hmm. And that he is, like, hands-on in, on, at every step of something that he does, which is why I don't use guitar pedals i know that's why i was surprised you wanted one so bad i'm very particular about the ones that i do use and i don't even know the names of those Mm -hmm. i'm just i don't use pedals pedals are not my thing but when i found out that jack white via very a very clever social media ad i saw an ad Mm. jack white made an ad for his guitar pedal oh sold I got I, yeah, I get it. Yeah. I get it. You were influenced. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Last cough, guys. No more coughing after this. <laughs> Thank y'all for listening to this special Halloween edition. From Raw Impressions Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Come listen to us again next time. Mm-hmm. Mm. Tricks and treats. Or binge us. Binge. Binge it. Binge. Listen to all of them again. Binge us. Why not? Backwards, forwards. Binge Raw Impressions. <laughs> Bend over backwards. Ah, impressions. <laughs> Must binge. Ah, <laughs> impressions. Must listen to last year's Halloween episode. Ooh. Do it. Ooh. It's there. Must listen. I put a really cool binge. song on the last one. Last year. A new one. I put an original song on the last one. Binge. <laughs> oh, and Izzy. Izzy did a song for the last oh, one. Oh, was that the one where she was doing Spooky? <laughs> I like that one. That one's amazing. Go back and listen to it. 
Yeah, <laughs> we should all we should all go back and listen to it. <laughs> 